वेलकम टू एपिसोड सिक्स ऑफ दी एन आर आई मनी पॉडकास्ट डू नॉट स्किप दिस वीडियो शोन टू लर्न अबाउट डबल टैक्सेशन ऑन एन आर आई हाउ टू रीपैट्रिएट मनी फ्रॉम इंडिया अब्रॉड एंड वॉट आर द कॉम्प्लाइंसेज दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दी एन आर आई ज्वाइन फाउंडर ऑफ एन आर आई जैन रितेश जैन अलॉन्ग विद आर टैक्स एक्सपर्ट भरत डी सरावगी ऑन दिस इन्फॉर्मेटिव पॉडकास्ट एपिसोड एंड ऑल्सो लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल फॉर मोर सच वीडियोज DTW okay. is basically double taxation avoidance agreement. India is having these agreement with many countries. Like there are certain countries which have a very advantageous position. Like I give you example like Singapore, Hong Kong. So, so if you if you are a Singapore tax resident or a Hong Kong tax resident, for Hong Kong tax resident the dividend rate is just five percent. So for them they only take five percent. Ah, nice. Wow, and, and that, that's great. Uh, and for Singapore, it is fifteen percent. Okay. Uh, for Canada and US, any idea? For US, it is twenty-five percent, which is higher. So you will not take the benefit of DTWA. So you pay only twenty percent in India. Got it. So you can decide to take the advantage or not right, decide right. based on the tax right. rate. So you can always use for your benefit only DTWA provisions, whichever is and I beneficial this, to. Yeah. Got it, and I think this ties into the next question, which I was having about ah, the DTWA. Let, let me add one more point to your yeah. last question. Suppose you are having an interest income. Okay. So interest will go to your normal basic slabs only. So suppose you earn an interest of fifteen lakhs or twenty lakhs, so it will go to your thirty percent slab. But since you are an NRI okay. and you are a US tax resident, so there you can take the benefit of DTWA, where it is fifteen percent only. So Indian government will. Will collect only fifteen percent from you. Rest, okay. whatever difference you pay in the US. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let's say this is this is a continuation of the question. India has DTWA with several countries. How does this impact NRI's taxation situation? How can they leverage these agreements to optimize their tax liabilities? I guess you've answered this question, but uh, you need to be uh, you know those people need to be in touch with the tax expert. Right. As a you know. Who understands the NRI taxation of different countries? Not, people are whenever I go to Singapore, Hong Kong, people are not aware about this provision, and they have been okay. paying taxes at twenty percent or the highest lab rate thirty percent. So if you are aware, you can able to use this particular provision. Oh, okay. Even I was not aware. <laughs> so my next question is: as as an NRI, should I follow any checklist of of do's and don'ts in India for various compliance and obligations? You, you see, Ritesh, I've been handling NRI matters since last twenty years, and okay. the moment NRI arrives in India, he start cribs. He start cribbing about okay. this is not working, this is not working. India is such a painful country. But you see, if you follow certain checklist, then okay, those, you can avoid all those cribs. So I always advise my client to maintain a ten years calendar of number of days stayed in India. You see, this is the okay. first question the income tax department asks you. Prove that you are an NRI. How will you prove okay. that? You can prove that only through your passport scan. So they yes. they ask you the copy of your coloured scan copy of your passport also. So if okay. if you surrender your password or you destroy it, always keep a scan copy of that. Similarly, if you are a uh, if if you are not a citizen of India, you must have uh, but uh, having Indian origin, you should have a copy of your OCI card also. Always like when you are selling, a, you, you see what happens when we sell a property. We don't keep any any documents for that. We simply hand over those documents to the new buyer. But it is always advisable to keep a particular copy of all your documents with regard to your property because whenever there is tax scrutiny, you will be able to show them those documents. Similarly, uh, uh, you see this Aadhaar linking is mandatory for all uh, resident Indians. Like if you are having an Aadhar, so you should link it with your PAN. Otherwise, hmm. your your PAN might get deactivated or it becomes an inoperative. Okay. You you can apply TRC tax residency certificate every year. Should apply in your home country, and you should avail the benefit by comparing it whether my income tax rate is better or the DTA rate is better. Similarly, you you should disclose your foreign income, your global income. To your country residents, because now India is sharing a lot of information with all the countries about mm. about the NRI. Because I have been hearing that uh, my one of my client got notices in Denmark, 
the government of Denmark has charged that you have income in India if you have not disclosed. Similarly in Finland. So in US also, all the global income is taxable in US. So it is your obligation to disclose your Indian income in the country, in your residence country. As I mentioned earlier, you should convert all your saving account in either NRO or NRE account. If you don't do that, there's a FEMA violation. Always make a list of your income earned in India. What kind of, do you have a rental income? So when you have all those income lists, you can share it with your chartered accountant to uh, file the returns properly. Always ask for interest certificate from bank. Always keep a bank statement because whenever there is a scrutiny, the income tax department asks, share all the bank statement of your bank. So at the, after three years, four years, you normally don't have those bank statements. Similarly, you should update your KYC with your bank. You should update mobile number, email with your bank. That is a very important part because for claiming refund, your bank validation is very important in the income tax portal. You should always update your uh, mobile number email id in your it in your income tax return portal also because if you don't give your proper mobile number and email id you will never come to know whether you have any notices or not you should update your nominee list in all your investment i'm sure uh, you must be aware now the mutual fund have uh, mutual fund uh, amcs are sending uh, emails to investors that uh, nomination is uh, mandatory for all those people mm. similarly in your insurance document also you should uh, update the nominations and you, you should keep copies of uh, original copies of those insurance documents also. Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, these are the few checklists which I uh, mentioned uh, because of these uh, past experience, uh, the problem which we face when we ask for documents from NRI. This is a very exhaustive list which you've shared. You know, there is one part. The first part is, is which is keeping me now concerned is that Thankfully, I'm keeping my copies of my previous passports. Right. Because your question is very valid. How will anybody come to know that, uh, you know, I was away from India for uh, more than 182 days? How can I prove it? So I did not know about that part. Other part, obviously, uh, the person who files tax on my behalf, you know, uh, they know about it. But this part is obviously uh, uh, my responsibility. And actually, all of it is my responsibility. But people are not aware about all this thing. Right. The so, first question what? they ask, prove that you are an NRI. How do I prove that? Okay. Only through the passport scan. And people okay. surrender their passport for uh, new citizenship or uh, the passport get cancelled. So they destroy it. So all those documents is very much required. So you are telling me not to destroy your previous passports. Just keep it with you. Yeah. Or you must have a right. scan copy of the document. Got it. A colored Got scan copy. Got it. So, Bharat, is there, okay, the next question is, is there a limit for NRI OCI to repatriate funds back from India? Now, I'm hearing a lot more of this thing from the time we've started NRI Zen. This is the topmost question in people's mind. Ki, okay, I will invest in India. Uh, there is mutual fund, we will invest. But what happens once I sell those investments, will I be able to repatriate all of that money back to India? Because they have this concern in the back of their mind. Right. Ritesh, what I believe we should first understand what is repatriation, what is remittance, and what yes. is NRE and NRO account. You see, if you are oh, yes. if you are having an NRE account in India and you are remitting some fund from US or Canada, so that goes to your NRE account and from yes. there you can make your investments. So NRE, yeah, NRE is a freely repatriable account. Okay. So even if you are making investment, those investments will come go to your NRE account only. And that can, you okay. can easily pull it back in your home country. So okay. the question of repatriation does not arise, but oh, it okay. may happen. So, yeah. yeah, but it may Please happen. That, yeah, that you were a resident in India, and you had yeah. all those normal saving account. Now you have hmm. moved to US or Canada or anywhere, and now you become an NR and you convert those into normal NRO account. So, hmm. so when you sell your investment, that fund will go to your NRO account. Yes. So those NROs account are non-repatriable. Okay. So, but Bharat, if I were to again come back to this question, are you telling me very clearly that if there is, you make your investments out from your NRE account, there is no way that, you know, the part of repatriation, there is a question of anybody stopping or yes. making adjustment to their repatriation. It is freely repatriable and the income tax authorities have absolutely no right, no jurisdiction 
right. uh, to make, you know, to hamper that movement Correct of the funds. Income tax has nothing to do with repatriation. It is the FEMA and the bank FEMA. which stops you. Got it. And the bank cannot stop me if it is out of my NRE account. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you have an NRO account. Yeah. So, so, Correct. so the fund is coming to NRO. Now you want to repatriate it back. So yes. there, there are options where the fund can be transferred from your NRO to NRE or NRO to direct overseas account. That is very okay. much possible. But in that case, you have to clear all your tax dues. Then only you can transfer those funds. Number one. Okay. Number two, there is a limit for that. In a particular financial year, up to $1 million only you can repatriate from your NRO to your NRE account or your overseas account. There's a limit for that. One what? million dollar per person in a particular financial year. NRE account is also your INR account. NRO yes. is also an NRE and INR account. Yes. But the thing is, uh, the difference is that from NRE account, it is freely that repatriable without any question from any authority. Yes. Yes. And from an NRO account, it is once you paid all your taxation dues, you'll be allowed to repatriate money and that also up to $1 million a year. Yes. Yes. Now, and there are, any, there, are any, any, formalities. Yeah. there are certain okay. formalities, like if you are transferring from NRO to NRE or overseas, uh, you need a self-declaration of Form 15CA. Okay. It's a compliance Got part and, uh, and, and you may need a certificate from a chartered accountant in Form 15CB. So Got these are the two compliance and you can easily transfer the fund. No problem at all. Okay. Now, is there any incidence of TCS, which we are hearing a lot more in the last few years from uh, any of these accounts? Right. You see, TCS is not applicable for non-residents. It is only okay. applicable for residents. This is a myth going around. So okay. if, if you transfer fund from NRO to NRE or overseas, there is no TCS deduction. It is only valid when a resident transfer fund to any NRE, uh, non-resident outside India or in, in India. So we can very, very clearly say that if you are an NRI, NRI, then TCS is not applicable to you. Yeah, not applicable. So if anybody raises that thing, that there should not be any discussion because it is not applicable to you as an NRI. NRI, right. sorry, NRI. as an NRI. It right. is applicable only to resident Indian. Yes. For different purposes, because government of India wants to tax some particular transactions. That is why it is doing it for resident Indians. Right. 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 And TCS okay. is also not a tax. It is basically just an advanced tax and to make yeah. compliance from them that the, those people file their return. That is the main yes. purpose of the government. Got it. So Bharat, I pay every year I pay TCS and obviously I take, uh, you know, uh, that credit when I'm, uh, I'm paying that tax at the end of the year. And it is just that I'm out of money for six months, but over a period of time, then I get back that thing and I, I, I can adjust yeah, it against my future interest. tax yes. 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 Uh, oh, you get it with interest. Got it. Got yes. it. That I don't know. Okay. So my next question is, my parents wants to give me some fund. How do I bring those funds to my overseas account? So your parents are living in India. Yes. And they want to give. So th there is no uh, problem with that. Any amount can be given to a blood relative in India. But when a resident parent is giving to a non-resident children, there's a limit of 2.5 yeah. lakh dollars. Okay. In a particular financial year. Got it. In a particular financial year. Yes. Okay. And what are the tax incidents for that? Is no, there, there is no tax incidence. There is no tax on gift. Only there may be TCS which the bank may deduct. Which and the parent the may TCS has... the return. Got it. Got it. Got it. TCS is just advanced tax against yeah, your future tax again, As I mentioned, it is applicable to resident Indians only. Uh, you know, it's been such a fruitful discussion, Bharat. Uh, you know, uh, we will put uh, uh, your website address on uh, on our, uh, you know, this podcast. Okay. And if you could tell us more about the website and where they can reach you, it would be great. Otherwise, NRIZEN as a platform, we help people uh, NRIs to invest in India. And we would be happy to share their tax, uh, you know, questions directly with you. But if they want to, uh, you know, reach you, okay, how can they reach you? Yeah, uh, my website is bdsadvisories.com. They can go hmm. through that website and they can directly reach me over WhatsApp also. My phone number is uh, plus 
डबल टू जीरो फाइव सेवन